Hey guys, what's up? How's it going? This video, we're going to take a closer look at the new Striker DC gamepad. This is by Retro Fighters. Uh, they make a bunch of cool third party controllers for classic consoles. Uh, and what they do, they kind of have a nice cool twist to it. They, they cater towards a retro, but they also put a modern twist to it as well, which is awesome. So I want to take a closer look at this gamepad. This is designed specifically for the Sega Dreamcast, which is one of my favorite retro consoles of all time. What do you guys think of the Dreamcast? Uh, I'm actually a big fan of the original Dreamcast controller, although it is kind of looking back on it. It is kind of bulky. This thing's narrowed down a little bit. We'll compare the two. We'll see how it plays. Thanks for watching, guys, and let's take a closer look. Okay, let's do an unboxing of this controller, kind of show you what's included when you get this. This is available at retrofighters.com, their website. You can buy it through them directly. That's the least expensive way to do it. You can also get it on Amazon, eBay. On Amazon, eBay, it's like $60 for this thing. On Through the website, it's about $49.99 US dollars. So I know that's a little bit more steep for controllers. For third-party controllers, I think you can get a used Dreamcast controller for about $20. However, this is uh, got, it's, it's good quality, I can tell you that, uh, based on my experiences with their other products. They have good product. And not only that, but Retro Fighters is very involved and in tune in the retro community, which is awesome. So here's the front. You kind of see it looks a little bit different. Almost looks like a Nintendo Pro controller as far as design goes. Here's the back. You have uh, kind of bullet points and ergonomic, ergonomic and modern design, uh, compatible with both VMUs and vibration packs. High quality and responsive D-pad, which is important when playing retro games, of course. Extra long 10, uh, 10 foot cord, I almost said 10 inch cord, that'd be super short. It's 10 inch cord, added turbo function to help get you to the next level, comfort and responsive analog stick. Okay, so that's cool, that turbo function's new, that's, an, that's interesting. This thing just kind of slides open. The first thing I noticed, you get this limited edition tissue paper. This will be worth a lot of money some of you guys. You can put it on eBay, you can flatten it out, you can wipe your butt, you can, you can uh, blow your nose. I'm just messing with you guys. Uh, anyway, here's, uh, here's some stickers. It does come with some cool stickers. These kind of these characters remind me of something from like River City Ransom back in the day. You can see these guys who were behind Retro Fighters are obviously Retro fans themselves. Uh, so those are cool stickers. Um, you can put them on your control, I suppose. You can put them on your desk, whatever you want to do with those. Frequently asked questions, what does the analog stick feel like? Uh, light resistance, the analog stick uses a high and micro, uh, blah, 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 word I cannot pronounce. <laughs> similarly used, let's see, pentodynamometer, pentanometer, I don't know. Similarly uses a switch and uh, an Android, that's cool. Uh, tablet devices. Devices. What accessories are compatible with the Striker DC? The Striker DC is compatible with all first party accessories, VMUs, vibration packs, four times memory packs. What does the VMU window look different than original? Why does it look different? The improved VMU window on the Striker DC pr uh, provides full visibility on the VMU, allowing you to full view. Now, how is D-pad different? The Striker D-pad has been modified many times to get the right feel down. You should have no problem performing your favorite moves in fighting games. We'll check out one of those in a second. Why are there both shoulder buttons and triggers? The Striker sho uh, showcases both shoulder buttons and triggers. This is to allow both digital and pressure sensitive analog input. You can tell they put a lot of thought on this, guys. Uh, how does this use the turbo functions? Press the button you'd like to apply turbo to X, Y, or A, B, and hold down the turbo function button, and the button will allow not now allow turbo function. Okay, it's very similar to like, you know, this is nothing new to retro games. Uh, TurboGrafx-16 controller, you could do that. Uh, Genesis head controllers, you could do that as well. Does the Striker DC work with DC and USB adapters? Although the controller has not been tested for all branded DC and USB adapters, it should work on all of them, not most. Okay, you do also get um, a keychain, which is cool. All the products come with a keychain. I think the characters, if I recall, are different as well. I got a different character before. Information, instruction manual, there's really not much to it. I mean, if you don't know how to work in a controller, um, you may need help. <laughs> uh, but anyway, here's the front. Uh, information about the, the company itself. And here is the layout, okay. The turbo button is there, and here it is. This is what, it, again, a nice 10 foot cord. Um, it feels like, you know, the plastic feels like a Dreamcast controller. Uh, here's a turbo button. You have a clear button, uh, start. It does feel different, uh, not in a bad way, you know. Uh, it feels different. You got these two trigger buttons, kind of like, again, like a pro controller, uh, A, B, X, Y. And this is where the VMU would slide into so let me grab and by the way i love these vmus i think they're really clever i think sega is really awesome it fits tightly in there like so which is great and you notice you can also see this part so it's much shorter than the the normal dreamcast controller 
I thought this was so clever because when these came out, uh, Tamagotchis or those digital pets were popular. And those are all, everyone at my school is playing those. So let's compare this to some, some other controllers and go from there. Okay, this is my original Dreamcast controller. I had this, I bought it launch day in 1999 when the system came out. And this is the original one I had. Um, you can see it's much, much more round than the Retro Fighters one. Uh, weight wise, they feel fairly similar. Uh, design layout is fairly simple, right? Very similar. You got the analog stick, the D-pad. This D-pad on the new one feels a little bit nicer. It's more, I guess, thicker than this one, a little bit more, more narrow. Um, you don't have the clear button. You don't, you're missing the turbo button, of course. And you have these two trigger button shoulder buttons where this one you have four. So that's different. Uh, this is like if you were to marry this to this Pro Controller. This is kind of what it reminds me of the two. Um, you got the top there, see? Two slots, standard as well. So let's plug this in. Let's play uh, Marvel versus Capcom. We'll kind of see how it how it compares, how the feel is, and go from there. Thanks. We're gonna do this old school, guys. I'm just gonna film the TV screen and uh, play the controller at the same time so you can kind of see me playing the game. One of my favorite games, by the way, on the Dreamcast. If you have a Dreamcast, this is definitely one to check out. Uh, another thing I noticed is the controller, or not the controller, but the cord itself, when I untangle the cord, it's super long, 10 feet long, a lot longer than the original cord, which is nice, it's a definite benefit. Uh, let's hit start. I can tell you the start button definitely feels different. It's got more, uh, it feels like more responsive, and it clicks, it has a click sound to it, kind of feel to it. You can love that. All right, let's do arcade. Now let's see, I like, I like Ryu. Rue, and then uh, let's do Spider-Man. Uh, let's do manual. I'll go normal. All right. Um, we're gonna play normal without any of the turbo buttons, and then we're gonna pause it and put the turbo buttons on. I'm on the one on the left. So. Up. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna pause it, and then I'm gonna hit turbo, and hold down, let's see if it works. See how I'm gonna punch, auto punch, see? That's cool. You clear it, it hit the clear button to clear that off, so that's cool. This game doesn't use the analog. Doesn't use the analog stick. I just got killed there. I wasn't paying attention. Um, but yeah, the D-pad itself. Yeah, the buttons have a different feel than it. It feels a little bit different than the Dreamcast controller in, in a good way. It has a the click. So both these button, both shoulder buttons, work the same function. See, he's gonna kill me too. I'm more. I'm not really focusing on my gameplay here. So. <laughs> Before I end this video, I do want to do another gameplay showing the analog stick because the uh, Marvel vs. Capcom uh, didn't use it. So let's check it out, see how it works. This is Sonic Adventure 2, another great game. This and the first one are awesome for the Dreamcast. I think the Dreamcast, considering it's 21 years old, it's old enough to drink in the US. It's crazy to think about. Uh, it has really aged well. It's just such a great console from, from Sega. Get the military pursuit. This is a good, good game to test this on. This part kind of reminds me of Crazy Taxi a little bit. You know, it, it's responsive. It definitely is responsive. It feels good. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you for subscribing. That always means a lot and liking this video. Uh, we'll see you guys soon. Take care and game on.